My name is Kate Leslie, and I'm the Associate Director of Education at Syracuse Stage. Welcome to our online Young Playwrights Festival. Each year, hundreds of high school students from all across central New York submit their 10-minute plays and performance pieces to us. We read all of these plays, and from this large group, select our top 16. These semi-finalists are invited to a Young Playwrights Festival workshop, which we were actually able to have on March 8th. At this workshop, the plays are read aloud by a group of actors to a panel of professional playwrights and theater artists. These theater artists then critique the plays, let the playwrights know what they think is working, ask questions, um, try to get to the heart of what they're writing about. The playwrights then have the opportunity to rewrite and resubmit their plays. Now, in a normal year, we would select the top eight from these and perform these plays on stage at Syracuse Stage. We actually have the opportunity this year to share with you all, all top 16 plays. On Tuesday and Wednesday, the semi-finalist plays will be performed. And on Thursday and Friday, the finalist plays will be performed. I absolutely adore the Young Playwrights Festival. I think it's one of the best things that the Syracuse Stage Education Department does each year. There's no other time where I get to hear and listen to so many high school voices and hear really what they're thinking about and what they care about each year. So I love the Young Playwrights Festival and I hope you do too. So enjoy the selection of plays for tonight. Hello, my name is Samuel Phillips. I am currently a sophomore at James Philadelphia High School and I wrote the play Piece by Piece. I was inspired to write this play by filmmakers who use conversation as a main form of narrative, filmmakers like Noah Baumbach, and Richard Linklater. I've been playwriting now uh, probably for four years, casually on my own, but uh, this is my first time ever like releasing a play to the public, so that's exciting. Um, my favorite part of the festival is getting to watch all the plays be performed and see what my peers have created. It's always it's always a blast. Um, and my biggest takeaway from this festival is having gained more knowledge about the art of playwriting and using that knowledge for the future. Lights up on a living room with a couch, coffee table, and kitchenette in the background. Claude is laying belly down on the light blue circular rug in the center of the room facing the audience. The rug is covered in wooden pieces and screws sorted in messy piles. A half-empty bottle of whiskey sits on the coffee table behind them that the two of them have been sharing. Kristen is flipping through a copy of The Sound and the Fury. Claude holding out a flimsy paper manual on how to build a crib. Both look extremely exhausted. Struggling over there, big guy. Let me see what we're looking at here. All right then, be like that. I was trying to sort the pieces out into piles and weave my way through these Swedish instructions. I bought this crib in America, so shouldn't the instructions come in English? It's Ikea, babe. It's a Swedish crib. Why don't you go back to your book? I got this. You've been working at this for 30 minutes and you've only managed to sort the pieces. I'm working on it. I know, just... C Kristen, please. You know what, fine. I'll just go sit on my ass. Claude stands up, grabs the bottle, and moves over to the sofa. He takes a drink and picks up the book and begins to flip through it. Kristen puts down the pieces and stares at Claude. I wouldn't call Faulkner a sit-on-your-ass kind of writer, but you have fun. Claude throws his feet up on the coffee table in an extremely snotty way. Is that an impression of me? Wow. Okay, real mature. You done? With what? Oh, with my chapter? Actually, yeah, I just finished the whole book. Yeah, this, uh, this, this Faulkner guy writes some really light stuff. You struggling down there, baby doll? Let me come down there and help you since you haven't accomplished anything in the five minutes it took me to read uh, The Sound and the Fury. <laughs> You're funny and a royal ass. Get down here and help me. Claude puts the book and bottle back down on the coffee table and sits back down next to Kristen. Throughout the next conversation, they switch between trying to put pieces together and looking at the manual, confused. 
So that's for school, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. You should read it. I would if I had the time. You don't work all the time. Yeah, but when I'm not, I spend doing work around here. Making sure our son has a place to go when I'm not around. I do all of that. You watch me do all of that, Kristen. You haven't so much as touched a dirty dish since we moved in. I don't live here. But the least you could do is, I don't know, dust the furniture or something when you are. I do it when I have time. You think that college life is so easy that I do nothing. I go to class five days a week and I work my ass off just so one of us can have a future. You, you mean that? Yes, I do. I think that our first priority should be getting me stable, getting me a stable, well-paying job. Of course, it'll take a while to pay off the loans and- I don't give a fuck about the job part. You said I'd never have a future? I, I didn't mean that. I didn't even say that. Maybe you're right. Maybe I won't have a future. But at least I'll sleep at night knowing that I tried to be a good parent, that I did the hard thing, giving up everything. God, fuck me. I was gonna be a pilot, Kristen. I was gonna come home and tell you stories about, about foreign military bases in boot camp. I was going to give you everything you ever wanted, and now... We have a beautiful baby boy. That's all I could have asked for. Then why am I still building this stupid crib? <sighs> You're acting like a child. Did you treat me like one? <sighs> I'm sorry. I just needed to say so many things. And so, completely ignored how I feel. I wasn't. You're not the only one doing the hard thing. I wish I could have had, I wish I could have more of a relationship with my son that wasn't seeing him on weekends or pumping in front of my roommate, knowing full well that my partner's the one who's gonna give him the stuff. I mean, I wish I could, I don't know. I live on campus, go to parties and shit, but no, I don't. Also, the four hour commute is shit. Act high and mighty all you want, but you aren't the only one doing this. Go to bed, then. He's in there. I sleep on the single. I can sleep on the pullout tonight. I'm not used to sleeping with him. I could roll over and crush him. Problem solved. I have to get up early and head back to campus tomorrow. I might wake him up. Whew, I don't know then. <laughs> Figure it out. I figured it out by myself. I will then, asswipe. See you in the morning. And that crib better be finished since you're such a great parent. And you're a great mother? Fine. I'll finish your stupid crib. Of course, you screwed up the piles. Is Swedish even a language? How do you read this shit? Bra. Bacon, Nidat, Osh, Colsira, Vatnet, Tildestuor, Et, Tidligit, Vislandi, Lejud. Mm. And a picture of two pieces just magically coming together. And I have to finish this tonight because Kristen says so. I mean, maybe the manual is magical. Hey, Kristen, is Sweden the place with fairies? Fine, fuck you too. Claude sets down the manual, stands up, and goes over to the fridge. He pulls out a beer and takes a big sip. While this is happening, the manual suddenly flips back to the starting page. Claude notices and jumps, quickly rushing over to pick up the manual. What the fuck was that? Swedish fucking fairies. I knew it. Ah, finally. Some English. Building a crib, a guide for dysfunctional couples. Ah. Oh. The first rule of building anything is get some help. Uh, that makes sense, I guess. Of course, don't chase off help when it comes, and especially don't try and assess your wife's parenting abilities. She's trying her best.
what the fuck is this manual? The second step is to distribute the work evenly. You don't have to work together, dipshit. Listen to her. Okay, fair point manual, but this isn't really specific to building a crib. The third and final step is to remember who you're doing this for. Sometimes you can't save a relationship, but you've got to push through for the little guy in the room next to you. P.S. It's fucking trolls, dude. We're known for our trolls. There is a long silence as Claude slowly turns to the back cover and sets down the manual. He looks to the bedroom. I don't want to wake her up, though. I won't. I can do this by myself. I've taken care of Vincent for this long by myself. I've made the money. Kristen has done nothing. I don't need her. Fuck oh, shit, titty balls. I knew I was gonna fuck it up somehow. Damn it. Don't get any ideas. I really don't want your help, but he won't stop crying, so here. I see what you're doing. Slide out. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. It's just he won't stop crying. Claude sits open-legged, gesturing for Kristen to sit down in front of him. She does, reluctantly, and Claude wraps his arm around her and Vincent as she pulls Vincent to her chest. Here, you need to loosen up. Don't grip him so hard. Yep. Okay. That's good. Claude, arms under Vincent, begins to rock the group, slowly and gently. Vincent's crying begins to subside. Why are you being so nice? Didn't you say I wasn't a good mother? You're not. <laughs> Yet. You just haven't been given a fair chance to be. Okay. I think we need to relook at the way we do this parenting thing from here on. You clearly need to get home more often, and we both need lighter workloads. More importantly, though, I think we need more time together. Just us. Like our old date nights? Yeah, like that. Just time together, not doing work or worrying about this little mother, <laughs> but just focusing on us. You've really grown up in the 15 minutes I was back there. I guess working on the crib really got me thinking about us. Of course, it doesn't look like you got much work done on it. I got caught up in the manual. Besides, I need help. I can't do this by myself. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Look at our little guy. He passed out. You're pretty good at this, babe. I guess I'll put Vincent back to bed. Ooh, well, why don't you let me handle that? <laughs> no offense, but I'm, I'm not sure if you're that good yet. So that's two pieces together. Doing it without the manual? I mean, yeah, it's in Swedish, right? How much help can it be? You have no idea. <laughs> oh, hey, those two pieces weren't together when I left. You figuring it out? I guess. I need one that matches this one. Sick. <laughs> okay, next one. They continue to pick up pieces and put them together. The manual is laying in front of them. It riffles through the pages one last time and the lights go down. End of play. My name is Christian Pierce, I'm a junior at Tyburn Academy, and I've been playwriting for about three years now. I wrote the first day with my sister Ivana, and what inspired this play was I was thinking about my freshman year, and what I was like, and I thought that I really would not enjoy having to do that all over again, but what if I had to? 
the play harvests the fears and anxieties of being a freshman and learning your new school and learning what your friends are going to be like. Um, my favorite part of the festival was the workshop because it was so interesting to see everybody else's plays and see them hear them read out loud for the first time. Um, my biggest takeaway is that there's so many opportunities for kids my age and for people who enjoy writing and just you can do anything that you put your mind to. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ivana Pierce. I go to Auburn High School and I'm in the 11th grade. I wrote two plays, The First Day and The Unfortunate Presidency. I wrote The First Day with my twin sister, Krisha, who came to me with the idea to do the play and I knew right away that I wanted to help her write it because she is one of the funniest people I know, so I knew our play would be just as funny and something that we could really enjoy working on together. This is my first time writing plays and I plan on writing more plays in the future because it was something I really enjoyed. My favorite part of this was going to the workshop and getting to meet the other young playwrights because they were some of the most kind-hearted and genuinely nice people that I've ever met. My biggest takeaway from this would definitely be try your hardest to see your work through the end. There were several points while writing the plays that I thought we were all out of ideas and that we couldn't come up with anything else to push the plays forward. However, in the end, we were able to finish both of them and it has been so rewarding to see our plays performed by other artists. The first day, Megan is walking through the high school hallway with her older sister, Anna, on the first day of school. They're approaching Daniel and teacher in the classroom. Welcome to adulthood, sis. Thanks, I hate it. It'll get better, I promise. If you ever need to talk about anything, I, your favorite sister, am always here for you. You're my only sister. Hey, you take what you can get? <laughs> well, thanks, but I think instead, I may just keep everything bottled up right here, and I'll eventually explode. That's a completely foolproof plan. I see absolutely no flaws in it whatsoever. Now, if you only remember one thing I have told you today, please remember not to lose this agenda book. If you do, you will not be allowed to walk in the hallways for any reason at all. Okay, great. So now, if I have to go cry in the bathroom, I have to collect, my, I have to collect myself enough to remember where I put the smallest book that I've ever seen and then rouse up enough courage to ask to get it signed. This should be fun. All right, what was that? Oh, sorry, nothing. That's what I thought. He was just telling me where the geometry classroom was. Freshies. It's on the fourth floor, right next to the pool. There's a pool? <laughs> no, that was a joke. It's just on the hall, and then the second door on the left. <laughs> anyway, could all the BOCI students please report to the auditorium? At this time, thank you very much. What the heck are the BOCES? I don't know, man. I think it has something to do with college, but I could be wrong. Wait, so did I accidentally sign up for it? Do I have to go there now? Do I have to get my agenda signed to go? Where even is the auditorium? Hey, calm down. Just take out your schedule and see if it says BOCES anywhere on it. Phew, okay. It doesn't say BOCES any place on it. Then we're good. Breathe with me. What belt do you have lunch? Uh, fifth. And in high school, they call it mods. Great. I have it. Fifth belt. I mean, mod, too. I've heard that the, uh, I've heard that the lunch table you choose is the key to having a good school year makes no sense. I feel like lunch should be the easiest part of the day. No! The people you sit with and the table that you sit at will be the same for the rest of the school year. Besides, I would just die if we were forced to sit with people we don't like. Or worse, alone. It's good to know you're not dramatic. Why don't we just sit with Anna and her friends? They're all juniors, and I know all of them, so I promise that they're good people. Woman, this is why I keep you around. Also, could you give me a ride home, maybe? And to think that this whole time I thought we were becoming real friends. 
Anna, can we sit with you? Of course. Not. I can't be seen with a bunch of freshmen, especially not ones who are so tiringly flamboyant. Like, come on. My head already hurts from looking at that god-awful outfit. Maybe try putting on a light when you get dressed tomorrow? Daniel is so embarrassed that he is rendered speechless, he runs off stage in the other direction on the verge of tears. The school bell rings and the day begins again. Now, if you only remember one thing I have told you, please remember not to lose this agenda book. If you do, you will not be allowed to walk in the hallways for any reason at all. I think we get it. If you're caught in the hallway without our agendas and we get sent straight to jail, we don't pass go and we definitely don't collect $200. <laughs> I was just thinking about how stupid these agendas are. Hi, I'm Daniel. What? I know. Sorry, what was that? Oh, sorry, nothing. That's what I thought. He was just telling me where the geometry classroom is. Freshies. It's on the floor, fourth floor right next to the pool. There's a pool? Dummy, there's no pool. She made the same joke yesterday. I literally don't know what you're talking about. Why were you in school yesterday? Can all the BOCI students please report to the auditorium? All BOCI students to the auditorium. Thank you. Wait, so they make that announcement every day? That's going to get super annoying super quickly. Oh my goodness, I couldn't focus on the announcement because you were talking over it. What if it pertained to me? It doesn't. You're the one that showed me that. It was about BOCES, which is only a thing for juniors and seniors, so we're good. Oh, phew. Thank you. What bell do you have lunch? Fifth. Great. I have a fifth bell, too. Mods. They called them mods. So I've heard that the lunch table you choose is the key to having a good school year. So I've been told. You know, the people you sit with and the table that you sit at will be the rest, will be the same for the rest of the school year. Besides, I would just die if we got forced to sit some with, sit with people we don't like, or worse, alone. Would you? Would you really? You'd just genuinely die. Hey, Anna. Hey, Megan, how's it going? Not too bad, but I would never want to do it again. <laughs> we sit with you? Of course not. I can't be seen with a bunch of freshmen, especially not ones who are so tiringly flamboyant. Like, come on. My head already hurts from looking at your god-awful outfit. Yeah, stop. Daniel, I am so sorry. Daniel rushes off stage, not waiting for her to finish her apology. Megan turns to Anna. What the hell? She runs after Daniel. The school bell begins, uh, school bell rings and the day begins once more. What bell do you have lunch? They're actually called mods, but fifth. Great. I have a fifth, be I mean, mod, too. So I've heard that the lunch table you choose is the key to having a good school year. Yes, of course, because everything is going to be the same for the entire year, and it would be a truly terrible experience if we were to be seated alone or with annoying people. You get me. Anna is about to walk past Megan and Daniel, and Megan decides to let her pass. Anna stops walking anyways. Hey, Megan, how's it going? Just peachy. I love your bag. It's super dope. Is there by any chance a spot for us at your table? Of course not. <laughs> I can't be seen with a bunch of freshmen, especially not ones who are so- She moves to gesture to Daniel. Megan steps dramatically in front of her, removing the gesture from Daniel's field of vision and cutting Anna's sentence short. Daniel, I absolutely adore your shirt. You know, I was planning to wear one that was very similar, but I couldn't find it. Thank you. We wouldn't want to sit with Anna and her friends anyways. Let's sit by ourselves. I'm sure it won't be that bad. If it ruins your school year, you can blame me. I take full responsibility. It's better than being the cause of your having an awful first day. I don't know why she's being so mean today. Something must have gotten into her. I swear she's not usually like this. It's okay. According to my handy-dandy meter, she wasn't geared up for much of an insult. 
I could have taken whatever she planned to have said next. I'm sure you could, but there's no reason for you to take shit from her. I'm so sorry. Don't be. We chillin'. They exit the stage together as the school bell rings, the lights fade, and the day ends. When the lights rise, Megan meets with Daniel in their homeroom. Good morning, sunshine. Could you give me a ride home from school? Of course. Finally, a new day. They grab their backpacks and walk off stage. The lights fade out. End of play. Hello. My name is Patrick Schmidt. I'm a senior at CBA, and my play is The Cavern Blues. I just started playwriting uh, for my class. Um, yeah, I think I was inspired just because I like writing absurd things, and so, you know, I wrote an absurd play about a guy in a hole. Um, I don't think that I'm going to continue. I'll probably quit while I'm ahead. Um, my favorite part of the festival was probably listening to all the other people's plays that was really interesting and fun and I think my biggest takeaway is that writing a play is hard but um, it's a rewarding experience to complete something like that oh. oh excuse me sir what are you doing this place is too dangerous for an old man like you yeah yeah are you one of those folks from the hospital again? Um, no. I, I don't really know where I am right now. You fell down a hole. Well, yes, I know that much. I'm still at a construction site, right? Is this a pit they're excavating or something? Oh, a construction site. When I first got here, it was just a sinkhole in the middle of a field. Weird how this place seems to change over time. Wait, how long have you been down here? You know, I haven't thought about that in a while. Not much light gets in. And you can't see the sun except during summer at noon. Temperature's pretty consistent. And I generally stay away from the opening so I don't get wet when it rains. Time doesn't really have much meaning down here. You lose track pretty quickly when you get lost in a great book. <laughs> Let's see, I've read, uh, how many? Uh, how do you have any books with you? Well, speaking of that, how do you get food and water? So many questions. Well, generally, whoever falls down here has some supplies with them. I myself brought along 12 books when I arrived. There's plenty of groundwater in these walls as well as worms, which are surprisingly filling. Sometimes I kill the worms and don't eat them but use them as bait for larger, more filling creatures. If I'm lucky, I'll catch a snake. Once, I even caught a vulture. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait. You're telling me there are other people in this cave too? Of course there are. <laughs> well, there were. They left pretty quickly. I guess they were scared off by little old me. Yeah. I'll see if I can climb back up. Oh. Great. Now there's three of us. This hole is a safety hazard. Are you a construction worker? I'm Adam. I fell down just a few minutes ago. What's your name? Uh, I'm Lester. No, I'm not a construction worker. That's an odd question to ask. Well, the hole's right next to a construction site, so I thought. Wait, I, I didn't see no construction. I was on my way to my car in the parking garage. A, a, a car got a little too close, so I backed up a few steps, and then down I went into this pit. And then you started going on about some construction gibberish? I don't remember there being a parking garage. <laughs> Time sure passes pretty quick down here, doesn't it? What are you saying, old man? Nothing goes on in this little grotto of mine. When I first fell down, I was surprised at how quickly time passed. Now I'm used to it. 
It might not feel like it, but you've been standing on that pile of dirt for days now. Seriously, it's only been a few minutes. You're the crazy one. I need to get out of here. <laughs> What's wrong with him? <laughs> I think we're stuck down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's just a lunatic. Didn't you see his eyes? I didn't realize you could tell if someone was crazy just by looking at their eyes. You, uh, you gonna be all right dealing with him? Or? A long time ago, I was forced into a hospital with all kinds of loons and psychos. Eventually, I managed to convince the doctors that I didn't belong there. So they let me out. Every now and then, some crazy folk come to take me back there. So I've become pretty good at persuading them that I'm in a good state of mind. I can calm down that young man just fine. Well, that's good, I guess. So what are you doing down here, anyway? I mean, is there a way out, or? That young boy is probably clawing his way out of here. There's a much easier tunnel that way where you can escape. I hate people that disregard everyone but themselves thinking they know the best way to do anything. I'll be sure to teach him a lesson before he gets back to the surface. <laughs> well, uh, seems like you got the situation handled. Uh, you might want to think about putting some a warning sign or, or some tape up there so people don't keep falling into this pit. Yeah, I'll get to it one day. <clears throat> this hole is too deep. You said other people climbed out, old man. I don't remember saying that. You're the first person to enter this cage since I fell down here some years ago. And a quite rude one at that. What about that other guy, Lester? He was just here. Where, how did he get out? Did you bump your head when you fell just now? I haven't the slightest clue who you're talking about. You're messing with me. I've got a job to get to, and at this rate, I'm going to be late. I have two kids in school right now, so I need to get home before they do. Do you love them? What the hell are you talking about? Of course I love them. Well, it seems to me that this whole might be a result of you focusing on your job and not your kids. And now? You've lost them both. That makes no sense. None of this makes any sense. Tell me how to get out so I can get back to my life already. It's already been days since you fell. See, I'm nearly done with my book. This is your new life unless you plan on digging your way out. Days? It hasn't been 10 minutes. You really think you could have come up with a delusion about some guy named Lester in less than 10 minutes? Have some faith in your sanity. It's okay. I started seeing people about three weeks after I entered the cave as well. Your brain will get over it soon and you'll start thinking about things rationally again. I've come to enjoy my solitude. Well, that was until you showed up. Three weeks? I need to get out of here. I have two little girls who are dependent on me. I have a job that I need to keep so I can pay rent. You can't tell me it's already been three weeks. Just a few minutes ago, you said it was a couple of days. Calm down, son. To me, it seems like none of that really matters to you anyways. But if you really wanna leave, the dirt over there is where I collect my water. It's easy to dig and has a direct path to some surface. If you start digging now, you'll reach the surface by next week. Oh my God. Oh. Hey, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a shovel? Hello? Hello? Can anybody hear me? Help. What day is it? What time is it? I need to go home and see my kids. I need to keep my job. I need water. Get me out of here. What the hell is this? You seem to be overreacting just a little bit. The more time you spend digging instead of sobbing, the sooner you'll be out of the ground. Where did you go? You were just gone. Are you another hallucination? 
Of course I'm not a hallucination. You're losing your marbles, kid. I'm what's keeping you sane. Look, I like you. You're not like that Lester guy, you're better than him. So I'm gonna tell you what you need to do. And the sooner you do it, the better things will turn out. So just listen to what I have to say. Lester? I, I think I, I made up Lester. Boy, what are you talking about? I haven't said a thing about Lester. I don't even know who that is. I just told you to listen to me and you're already making up fairy tales. You need to get digging right this instant if you want to see your kids again. Hey, uh, sir? Okay. I'm okay. What do you need? Um, turns out that weirdo was right about the construction after, after all. I, uh, I just wanted to tell you I could get someone to put some tape around the edges if you wanted. I still got a half hour before I'm needed at work. That'll do just fine. Thanks, kid. Hey, you. You're not a very good digger. Maybe it'd be better if you tried climbing out again. I bet after a few tries, you could figure out your way to the surface. I could have sworn I saw you talking to Lester just now. Am I really going insane? If you spend less time worrying about your sanity and more time climbing, you'll be out before you know it. <laughs> what a buffoon. Hello? You're not supposed to be down here, sir. This is a construction site. We're about to dump gravel down this hole when some nice young man alerted me to your presence. You need to leave the premise right now. Well, this was gonna happen sooner or later. Let me just gather my things. Maybe it is time to go back to the hospital. Is there anybody else? Oh, <laughs> nope, just me. Hello, oh man. Oh, this hole's too deep for someone like me to climb out of. Hello, is anyone here? Oh my God, they're filling up the hole with gravel. Hello, can anyone hear me? I'm stuck. What day is it? Where is everybody? Help. Anybody? My name is Adam. I, I have a job. I have two kids. I have things. I go down here and I'm stuck. I'm real. This place is real. I, I'm awake. Please, somebody tell me something that makes sense. What does it mean? What is any of this? What does it all mean? Oh, what does it mean? Hi, my name is Alice O'Connor, and I'm a sophomore at James Wilda High School. My play is titled Dream School, and my mom actually came up with the idea to write about getting into college, but I came up with the idea to write about two stories going on simultaneously because I wrote this play while seniors were deciding where they were going to go to school next year, and I just saw how many different places people were going and for so many different reasons, and I wanted to show this in a play because everybody wanted something different out of college, and I think my play conveyed the idea that it's okay if people have different dreams and different dream schools. And this is actually the first play I have written, but if another opportunity came up, I would definitely write another one, because it was really fun to just write about anything that I wanted to. Um, my favorite part about the festival was going to the workshop and hearing all of the other kids' plays read, because they had so many cool ideas and things that I never would have come up with, and it was amazing just to hear how they came up with their own story ideas. Um, my biggest takeaway that the Young Players Festival taught me is that you should try anything you want to, even if you haven't done it before, because like I said, I had never written a play before this, and I was able to get this far, which showed me that you should really just try anything you want to, because you don't know how much you'll accomplish. So overall, um, I just wanted to thank Syracuse Young Play Arts Festival for this opportunity because I learned so much and had a lot of fun doing it. Dream School. Jake and Liam are sitting at their desks at home. I'm 
name. Well, that's an easy one. Jake Davis. Tim Patterson. Hometown? Madison, Wisconsin. Seattle, Washington. Why do I want to attend your college? How am I supposed to explain that this is my dream school and my life will basically be over if I don't get in in 350 words or less? Because you have biochemistry, English, statistics, history, Spanish. There are just so many to choose from. So I think we're going to leave around 6.30 to go out to dinner, okay? Dinner? Mm, there's no time for eating at a time like this. My application is due tonight, and this is my dream school, Mom. All right, all right. Carry on, but don't stress yourself out too much. There are plenty of good colleges out there. And this is why I am the perfect fit for your astronomy department and belong at your school. Hey, buddy. Need any help? Nope. Um, I'm all done. Just need to hit the submit button. Now all we do is wait for the magic to happen. Your school is the perfect fit for me and one I would be honored to attend. I don't know. This is kind of a stretch for me. What if I don't get in? We'll find you another option. Whatever happens, you'll be okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll just submit it and see what happens. Please, 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 please. Blackout on both rooms. It is the next day. Did I get in? Did I get in? Ugh, nothing there. I'm not worried. Honey, wake up. What? What happened? You were so focused on your application that you forgot how to live. Remember the concept of food? Brushing your teeth? Sleeping in your bed? Well, I had to give it everything I've got. <laughs> All right, go ahead and get ready for school. Next scene. Please be male, please be male, please be male. Where is it? Where is it? Mail! It's not here. Why isn't it here? Uh, thank you for your application to our school. We reviewed your application. But unfortunately, we cannot accept Jake Davis at this time. Oh no. What's wrong, buddy? Oh. Son, I'm so sorry. I know who you wanted to go there. My life is over. Mom. Yes, dear. Why hasn't my email come about if I was accepted yet? I thought it would be faster. Uh, you mean this? Oh my gosh, what? I thought it was coming by email. I've been looking all day. Sorry, honey. The mail came this morning and I didn't have a chance to look through it until now. Different colleges send news in different ways. There's no way you would have known. Mom. I got in. I got in! <laughs> oh my gosh! That's amazing, sweetie! I am so proud of you. I'm so excited. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. I don't know what I'm going to do. <sighs> Next scene. In Liam's room. <sighs> T-shirts. Check. Shorts. Check. Toothbrush and toothpaste. Check. Check. Underwear? Yes, mom. <laughs> Just making sure. All right. I think you're all set. I can't believe my baby boy's heading off to college. Mom. Okay, okay. I'll go start the car and you bring your stuff downstairs so we can get ready to leave. 
Monson, we have to get ready to go. We're going to be late for orientation. No, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. You're right. The world is ending. The world is my oyster. <laughs> well, left crowd. Whatever. Let's just go. In the dorm room, in Liam's room. Mom, I'm so excited. I can't wait for all my classes. Bio and, and calculus and history and English and Spanish. Liam, Liam, <laughs> slow down. It's your first day. You still have orientation and we have to unpack all your things and meet your roommate before you can get on to all those classes. I know, I'm just so psyched. We can unpack, but can we do it quickly and then I can go exploring? <laughs> okay, sweetie. Let's get to it then. What am I even gonna take here? Uh, history, French? I wanted to study astronomy, so I could- I know you had this big plan about what you wanted to focus on and when, but you just have to focus on what you've got right now. And what you've got is a great school right here. Whether you like it or not, it will give you as many opportunities as your dream school. Forget about them. It's their loss. <laughs> no, Dad, it's my loss. This is all my loss. I lost. It's over. I'm done. Well, I tried. There's no convincing you. Just try not to bum your roommate out like that. Did you try that for me? <sighs> yes, we're here. Maybe it will be fine. Maybe. Dave knocks on the door. Coming. Hey, Rumi, I'm Liam Patterson. Jake Davis. I was just about to go explore on campus. Wanna come? Uh, sure, I guess. We can go to science labs and the dining hall and the basketball courts. And we can visit the French professors and the astronomy professors and the library. Wait, what did you just say? The library. No, before that, they have an astronomy program here? Heck yeah, they do. This is the greatest school ever. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Maybe this won't be so bad after all. Maybe. <sighs> End of play. <laughs>